Well, grace and peace to you and welcome to the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is good to be together and um, I'm glad to be back with you. There's a lot less happening than there was when I was here last. <laughs> Seems like the schedule that I remember was insane and this is not quite so crazy. Uh, but there's still things coming up, so we need to make sure we don't miss something important. Um, one, um, we have this thing with a photo directory happening, and right now signups are really puny. Um, we have a minor problem with the site on our on the administration end, and we're going to get resolved to meet as soon as we can this week. So, um, so feel free to call the office after Tuesday to try and uh, sign up, or uh, there'll be a way to do that off the website. We'll make sure that's working. Um, anyway, but also this is an opportunity for if you have friends and neighbors who would like a family portrait, they get a, anybody, can, anybody can come get their pictures taken. Doesn't have to be a member of the church. Those that are part of the church will be in the directory. Other folks won't be in the directory, but they can still get their picture taken. Um, and it allows uh, you know families to get a free 8x10, and they can buy whatever else they want, but... Um, everybody gets that, and so uh, there's a way that we can offer that as well to uh, the community around us who might not otherwise have an ability to do that. Yes? Well, we get, a, we get a directory per every photo taken. There's like a directory we get, and then we usually buy some additional ones so we have enough for everybody. But it is, it, it, a directory with five families in it is not very useful. It's more useful when everybody's in it, right? So, um, well, that's on our end. So, yes, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll, Yeah, we always have that problem, too, yeah. Yes. So picture taking is a good thing, uh, but also th that's actually a great reminder, Susie, thank you, that um, sometimes the names we go by are not our official names. I know some go by middle names, some go by other names, but when you go to the hospital, they use your real name for the check-in process, Right? So if I'm going to go visit Bob Jones in the hospital and they don't have a Bob Jones, I can't find you. Does that make sense? Because they won't let me know where it is. So, and especially somebody like Susie filling in, thank you by the way, um, it, it makes it really difficult to, to, to find you um, when, so make sure, we, make sure we know your actual official correct name. Um, in our records, so we can have that. Anyway, so a picture's coming up. Um, that's coming up really quick. I do recommend to you, um, it, and what's in Bolton is pretty much what's coming up, but the, the Reconnect event that's listed here with Bishop Lewis, she did one of these with the clergy, and it was really fantastic. Um, just a way for her to touch base with everybody, and, and, uh, and she's offering that for a lady as well. It's a Saturday. It's in Chesterfield, so it's not too terribly far away. So I would recommend that. Um, if, if you can go to that event, the details are here, and I would, I would really recommend that to you. Um, for our youth, we have uh, the DNAO Hype Rally starting. DNAO, for those of you who don't know what it is, is the kind of area-wide youth uh, extravaganza that happens in the spring. Uh, youth groups from... Uh, a whole lot of churches, I don't re remember the current number, it's a lot, come together for a really good weekend. And the, one of the kickoff events for that is coming up very soon uh, on February 19th, so just about a month away. Uh, and that'll be here uh, in this sanctuary. So that'll be fun to have that kickoff event back here. Um, well, you can see what else is there. Any announcements we didn't mention that we need to? I know uh, choir's back in, so now's a great time to join the choir if you don't, if you have been considering it. Uh, and stay tuned on Bible study. That information will be coming very shortly once I figure out what we're doing. I got to get my mind back in South Hill. 
All right, well, let us prepare ourselves for worship today. Good morning. All right. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, welcome to South Hill United Methodist Church. Um, let us come together in worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, please stand uh, for our call to worship and remain standing. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. And our hymn is, uh, Great is Thy Faithfulness, uh, number 140 in our hymn.
Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Let us uh, begin and read together our opening prayer. Jesus Christ, Lord of the church, we rejoice that you have formed your people into one body, comprised of believers of every race and nation. Your salvation has reached to the ends of the earth and to all generations. We praise and thank you that your gospel has reached us and that our voices will join those of many languages this day to proclaim your praise. Accept our praise, purify our hearts, instruct us in your word, feed us at your table, and visit us with your spirit, that we may follow in the ways of faith to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now let us share the peace and love of Jesus Christ with each other as we pass the peace. <clears throat> peace be with you, brother. <clears throat> All right. Let's have our um, gospel reading and uh, please, please stand for our gospel reading. Be taken from the Gospel of John, first chapter, verses 29 through 42. The next day, Jesus, he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, for he was before me. I myself did not know him, but... For this I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend as a dove from heaven, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and I have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day, again, Jesus, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, what do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. 
He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, So you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming and said of him, Behold, an Israelite, indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Word of God for the people to God. Be to God. Any children here this morning who'd like to come up? Parents doing this, a couple of kids going. All right. Well, let us. 
Let us hear the words from Paul's beginning of Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. From Paul, called by God's will to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, and from Sosthenes, our brother, to God's church that is in Corinth, to those who have been made holy to God in Christ Jesus, who are called to be God's people, together with all those who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in every place. He's their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God always for you, because of God's grace that was given to you in Christ Jesus. That is, you were made rich through him in everything, in all your communication and every kind of knowledge, in the same way that the testimony about Christ was confirmed with you. The result is that you aren't missing any spiritual gift while you wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also confirm your testimony about Christ until the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and you were called by him to partnership with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Word of God for people of God. So greetings. Greetings are what we use to say hello to meet one another, right? Greetings say a lot. You ever notice that? You can tell a whole lot about what somebody's thinking by how they greet you. Hi, how are you doing? I'm just well, thank you. Is very different from, hi. Right? Or, you know, I mean, so many variations, right? You can tell how you feel, somebody can tell how you feel about them by the way you greet them. Greetings allow us to come back together after we've been gone. You know pretty instantly whether you can pick up where you left off with someone or not. Greetings carry with them meaning, like when you're called to your superior's office. You know one of two things is going to happen. You're going to get a raise, or you're in trouble. When we greet our children, we know whether they're happy or whether they're just whatever, right? So I, I know parents will recognize this. You know, kids come home from school, you say, hi, how was your day? There's a big difference between fine and fine. That greeting carries with it meaning, right? Paul's greeting in the letter to the church in Corinth is no different. It is full of meaning. There is a lot in these few verses. On one hand, it's standard Paul. Paul always says, from me and maybe someone else, to you, grace and peace. That part's consistent among all of Paul's greetings in his letters. But they're all a little different, too. And he uses labels to set the tone, usually. So he says, in this case, Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes. On one hand, it sounds like small talk getting on the way to getting to the true point, but he's actually already made a big point. See, the church in Corinth is divided. That shouldn't sound too unfamiliar today. The church is divided in Corinth, and we don't know exactly why the church in Corinth is divided. It's not super clear, but we, what we do know is that there is division and factionalism and an air of elitism that is clearly present in the way Paul talks to the church. So Paul wades into this letter by laying out some credentials. He says, I'm an apostle. Not just some traveling preacher off the street, 
not some random person sending a letter that's concerned. It is, I'm an apostle. But then he quickly follows that by saying, because he doesn't want to play this elitist game that Corinth is pretty fond of, apparently. He's an apostle, yes, but he's called by God. Not something he's done. It's not a result of the right education or the right seminary or the right whatever, right? He is called by God. That's the reason he's doing this. Is It is purely a call. It is purely the will of God. That's how he is where he is. So in the same sentence, he's flexing some authority. I'm an apostle. And humility, but only because God made me so. The lesson that he returns to over and over again within his letters to the church in Corinth. Of course, there's Sosthenes. We don't know who Sosthenes is exactly. Best guess is Sosthenes is a ruler in, uh, well, a, a, a person in the ruling council in Corinth. Because Paul is very clear. He said, our brother. Words aren't accidental. Our brother. Not my brother, not your brother. He said, our brother. So something that is held in common between Paul and the church in Corinth. They would have known who Sosthenes is, which is why he mentioned the name. There's a link between Paul and the church in Corinth. So after he introduces himself and our brother, he returns to the audience. He says, to the church of God that is in Corinth. In other words, the sanctified that's called this together church. Those are the words he uses to describe his readers and his hearers. Sanctified not by their own efforts, not by their own hand, but by Christ Jesus himself. Called, as he is called, to be saints, to a way of living, to a way of being. But together with those who in all places, in every language, in every place, calls them on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Their Lord and ours. Isn't that interesting? So he's addressing this church that is split and celebrating the fact that this church is part of something bigger. Bigger than their church, bigger than their collection of churches in Corinth, bigger than their egos and their divisions and their attitudes. Paul is very delicately putting them in their place. And then says, grace and peace to you. I find it very interesting after spending, um, well, three weeks not here. One thing that's striking when you spend time somewhere very different than where we are. While the place is very different, the people not so much. Even the wide collection of people that I saw on the airplane, which is even a wider collection than we saw on the ground, the people not so much different. Not all speaking the same language. Everyone going somewhere. But certain things we all kind of agreed on, even without a formal agreement. But even on the ground, I mean, people are mostly the same. I think that's a some what Paul's getting at here, that especially within the church, we're part of something bigger and we're mostly the same. We tend to focus a lot on differences and the things that divide and pull us apart, and yet we are really mostly the same. In Paul's letter, as he establishes this fact that, yes, we are all part of something bigger. We are part of a, something that is called by Christ. Then it says, 
I give thanks. That's how he begins his conversation with his church. He said, I give thanks. He's identified everyone. He's reminded everyone of their place. And then he expresses gratitude. It's not avoidance. I mean, sometimes, you know, you say things like, thank you for this before you give somebody the real news. You know, say something nice, tell them what you really mean, and then say something nice, right? That's not what Paul's doing. He's actually saying, I give thanks for you. It's his way. He begins with gratitude. That's how he lives his life, starting with gratitude. Diana Butler Bass wrote a book, So Grateful, The Transformative Power of Giving Thanks. And in that book, she talks about what's called a gratitude gap. So apparently, as people, we are really good at giving thanks, not near the edge, when things happen to us. We're good at giving thanks when things happen to us. Right? Would you agree with that? We're, that's pretty, we're, we're all pretty good at that. But she, she says we find it more difficult to let that gratitude shape our larger common life. In other words, we live in a constant state of dissatisfaction. Interesting. So in, in this letter, Paul is trying to show a different way of living. He starts, he's showing gratitude for the life they live in Christ. He gives thanks for the fullness of God at work in them. Then he says, it's evidenced by the reality that they are not lacking in any spiritual gift. That seems like quite an incredible statement because Paul goes on to talk about all the things they're not doing right. Right? I mean, this whole letter is because of short supply of humility love not being first and foremost in their hearts you know but he says they're not lacking any spiritual gift but the language used is very interesting he said, you. He was writing to the community, not an individual, right? So you is not you, as in you and me, you. You is more like y'all. I got that right, right? I know I'm Virginia boy, but I'm not, you know, this far south. So that's, that's y'all, right? That's right. So, so it's more of a y'all have, every, have all the spiritual gifts. It's the body that has everything it needs. It's the body that responds to the faithfulness of God. It's the only way that we can respond to the faithfulness of God. You and I may lack spiritual gifts. Matter of fact, I know that at least I lack some spiritual gifts. But y'all aren't. Does that make sense? As Paul argues, it's time to reclaim those gifts in the life and mission of the church. To focus on that, to focus on the gratitude of being God's people first. And spend much less effort worrying about the other things that seem to be pulling apart and dividing the church in Corinth. That sounds really familiar, doesn't it? There's a lot of talk about dividing and pulling apart. We see it across the world. It's not just in the church. It's not just in the U.S. It's everywhere. There's this infection of division. I 
think we all, all can probably agree that's pretty destructive. Paul's urging this church in Corinth, you have, y'all have everything you need. But it takes y'all to do it. So using that right, right? We're the church. That's amazing. Each face here is here because we're the church. And we each have something that together is more than we can be. The sum of the parts is greater. I got that all wrong. Anyway, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Maybe there we go. All right? We are more together than any one of us can be by ourselves and any group of us can be. Paul even goes so far to say this is confirmed. God has confirmed these gifts in you. That's amazing. Because he's seeing the evidence and we can see the evidence around us, can't we? When we get it right, which we do a lot, when we get it right, things happen. The world changes. And that's awesome. Maybe a key to that is what Paul's saying. We need to start with that, that attitude of gratitude. Boy, that rhymes. That we need to be thankful for what God has given us. I'm thankful to be back with you. As nice as it is to get a break every now and then. Because honestly, we've got work to do. We've got a world that's tearing itself apart. Because we're focused on what each one of us... We're focused on the wrong thing. We're not focused on Christ. You know how you have more people focused on Christ? We do exactly what John's disciple did in the gospel lesson we heard this morning. Did you catch what happened? John talks about who Jesus is, right? Two of John's followers saw Jesus then and left to follow Jesus. Now John could have been really upset about that. There go my guys, my two best guys just left. Now what am I going to do? No, it's... Right? It's all about Jesus, so that was a good thing, right? And Peter's brother was one of the first to go follow Jesus and brought Peter in, and then Peter's put in front of everybody else to run the church. His brother could have said, well, that's not very neighborly of him. Look, I was the first one here. I should, you know, no, because it's all about Jesus, you see? See how this works? When we're focused on Christ and what Christ wants to do in the world, all this other junk that is our junk goes away. Because it doesn't matter anymore. And that's not easy to do because we sometimes like our stuff. We like our status sometimes. We like where we are. Is that fair? We do. It's human. And we see this everywhere we go. Doesn't matter where you go in the world, that story is the same story. But we focus on Jesus. That's not the most important thing anymore. And the gifts that God has given y'all is enough for this place this time in this complicated world that we are in so let's go share it better than we already do we do a pretty good job we really do most days we get it pretty good other days not so much fair
that's why we're here, I think. We're here to show the world this Jesus who's given us so much. Let's share him. Let's use all the gifts he's given each one of us together to do something amazing. Let's change the world. It is possible. We've got to start with Jesus. Let him confirm in us what he's already given us so we can be the people he wants us to be. And like Paul, I wish you grace and peace as we do just that. Together. As y'all. Amen. Well, let us pray together. O God, you are the hope of all the ends of the earth, the God of the spirits of all flesh. Hear our humble intercession for all races and families on earth, that you will turn all hearts to yourself. Remove from our minds hatred, prejudice, and contempt for those who are not of our own race or color, class or creed, that departing from everything that estranges and divides, we may by you be brought into unity of spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. See the prayers that are before us. Again, I thank you, Susie. It seems that, uh, you know, I leave town and everybody goes to the hospital. Oh. But uh, thank you, thank you for um, taking good care of us all. Uh, I do rejoice that uh, Shirley Weatherby did come home yesterday, so she is home, um, and that's a good thing. So we ask for uh, to continued healing for her. Billy, good to see you. Do we have others we need to lift up today? Doris Vaughn, uh, open heart surgery this week. Celebrations. So if you couldn't hear that, uh, Sophie won first place in the Voices of Democracy essay contest and will be heading soon to the national competition. Yes. Yes, safe travels. Thank you. There was a point watching World News where I was a little unsure about a return trip, but uh, I do have to admit I was um, a, a little relieved on our on our second part of the leg after we actually cleared Iraqi airspace, but.
Edwards. And Edward would like a blessing uh, regarding Navy. Thank you. Other celebrations. I know we have college students returning to campuses uh, today and tomorrow, and some have already left, so... Um, safe travels and blessings for them as they go into a new semester. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we can come together, that we have the ability to do that, that we can be your people. And be together and celebrate who you are in our lives and the wonderful things that you do for each one of us. As we come together, we're also mindful of those around us who may be recovering from illnesses or procedures. Who may be unsure about what the next step in their lives may be. Who may be missing loved ones. We we bring them all to you because you've given us the capacity to love others. We know it's a fraction of the way you love us, but it's important. And it means something. So these lives that we celebrate today are important for us. And we know they're important to you. So strengthen those who are weak. Give courage to those who fear Give strength to those who doubt. Healing to those who need it. We are your people. And that is a good thing. Help us continue to celebrate who you are each and every day so that others can hear, can come to know through us who you are. As we pray in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Well, let's continue our celebration of who God is in our lives by receiving of God's tithes and our offerings.
gracious and loving God, give you thanks indeed for all you give us. For everything we are, everything we can be, is all because of you. Help us live into your blessings that have been already confirmed by Christ in us. Help us continue to use each and every gift so that your work can be done in the world. And help us, as we do, do so with thanksgiving. We, again, are your people. And that is enough. All this we pray through Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Christ. This battery's dying. I was just happy out. This is the message from Christ. The question, will you go? Share his love. 